BJ Ghidorah with the Daily BJ. I'm going to show you how to do slams effectively, how not to do them, the difference between a slam ball and a bouncing ball, and then my top slam variations. Here we go. All right, so here are the three biggest slam faux pas I see. Number one, you see people lift it up and they just drop it. The whole point of the slam is a reverse jump. The bigger the load, the more you explode. So by just dropping it, yes, you are picking it up, you're engaging the legs, a little bit of the backside of the body, but not really what the whole movement is, which is a counter movement. Creating more counter movement creates more movement. So that's a big issue there too. Another thing is you see people overly flex the spine. All right? So that just, that's explosive spinal destruction. If that is your goal, keep going at it. You'll get there quickly, trust me. So the real focus is we're trying to actually load the hips and ankles. You wanna finish in a triple bend ankle knee hip athletic position so you can also pick it up without overloading the spine but it's a very athletic position to end into another thing you see is now there's two ways you can do it and i'll show that coming up either getting full extension here or coming all the way back overhead to that full overhead throw position but some people don't go high enough overhead so again you can't unless we fully load those muscles we can't really create enough explosion by stopping short we're, we're limiting the range of motion, limiting our power potential, and not getting the most out of the exercise. So you don't want to be slammed from here unless you're learning how to do it, have a mobility issue and can't get overhead. But the goal is go lighter, get full range of motion, and then go from there. Here are my top slam variants. Now, regular slams using the slam ball. Now there's two key positions I like to load from. One is, again, that overhead throw position. So the key focus is crunch the abs, pull the rib shoulders down, clench the glutes. You kind of give yourself plumber's ass there. Kind of round it up. Again, it doesn't look good, but it's really important for maintaining a good lumbo-pelvic position. And I've got my arms slightly bent, and I'm loaded, and now I can actually engage my triceps into the movement, and then, and see how I finish? Chest up. You can round the upper back slightly as you pick it up. That's what your thoracic spine is really made for. It's meant to flex extend while keeping good low back positioning, all right? So if you have to do that, that's fine. And again, when you use a slam ball, you have to use more range of motion because you gotta pick it up. I'll show the bouncing ball next. The other option is kind of a full reach as if you were about to jump or leave the floor and then come down and create that counter movement. So I like to do kind of a stick and slam there so we get full reach and then come down fast. Reach, reach, sorry, stick. And then again, when the goal is power, five to 10 reps with a reset, trying to create as much explosion on each rep. If you're trying to go more metabolic, you still want to kind of keep the reset between reps with the slam ball, then to go for two, three, even five minutes straight, rest pausing as needed. Let me show the bouncing ball. Slam next. ball is ideal for max power development. The bouncing ball is more for turnover, speed, conditioning, Metcon, all that good stuff. Bust of both worlds using both. So it depends what you have access to. So here, it is also good for those that are taller athletes or mobility issues. They can't get all the way down. And again, I come from behind or up. You've got both options there but the mechanics are similar, at least at the level of the ankle, knee, and hip. So that one gets highly metabolic. Another thing I do, especially for my home programs, a lot of people live on higher levels, second, third, plus four. They can't slam. Personally, if it was me, fuck the neighbors, they'll deal with it. You gotta get that workout in, but I understand, or just don't have access to a, a ball that can slam on a safe surface. So you can do what's called a faux slam or a decelerating slam. So you create the same movement, but you have to catch it. So it actually, it's actually not just a substitute, it's actually a good variation because it teaches you how to accelerate a load and then decelerate it quickly in the same rep. So, back up. All right, so it's a nice little option to add to the mix if for whatever reason you can't slam, but if you can slam, it is more therapeutic, a great stress reliever. Either way, you can make it work. Halo slam is an awesome way to add some shoulder mobility and core stability into that whole body slam movement. So what we're gonna do is, and you can change which directions you go each rep. I like a slam ball for this personally, but you can also use the bouncing ball because I really like to get that max power in each rep. So good kind of slightly bent arm position, pull it over the head, come back to that overhead tricep extension position, pick it up, pick it up. All right, so again, it's where mobility meets muscle, meets power. So many benefits in that movement. It's a fun one to add in. I like that for sets of at least 
30 to 60 seconds, upwards of one to two minutes. Again, because you're taking your time in each rep, you're getting the mobility benefits. Great for fat loss. Give that one a shot with either ball, but I like the slam ball best for that. Drop squat slams, best done with the bouncing ball. Great for foot quickness, cardio conditioning. Great to plug into a fat loss circuit, all right? As a pulling or cardio or lower body movement. But again, whole body, core, there's lots of stuff going on here. I like to start with that full reach, feet close together. And all I'm gonna do is jump out to a semi-squat position. As I slam, come right back. And then you can start to get more rhythmic with it. You can also add more depth into the squat or keep it more of a quick semi-squat. Watch out for the brains. All right, they might get concussed. Rainbow slams, awesome rotational pattern. Teaches one of the most important aspects of athleticism, pivoting feet with rotating hips. I like the bouncing ball for this because again, we get some good turnover on it. The big focus is what I mean by pivoting feet, rotating hips. Belly button is always forward. So as I do this movement and make that rainbow pattern, look at how I pivot the feet, rotate the hips. That's the focus. I don't wanna go like that. That's a non-athletic movement. It's a good way to blow up the back. So we're here, I'm gonna come over, pivot the feet, rotate the hips. This one is great for 30 to 60 seconds. For more power, you can go upwards of two minutes. If you're looking for more stamina, all right, get more turnover in that. You'll enjoy this one a lot. Taste the rain. I don't care what anybody says. It's all about the ocean and the motherfucking ocean with a stamp. Makes no sense, but you're still here, so I'm surprised. We lock it in, step and slam, foot quickness, get you in that lateral frontal plane of movement, break out of the traditional linear patterns. So I get here in that extended position, abs crunch. I'm gonna step, slam. Little mini step. Great for the lateral hips, the glutes, metabolism, all right? You can make it easier by just going on this one to face level or forehead level, but ideally here. And you don't have to go any heavier than a five to 10 pound ball in the beginning with this stuff. And in general, unless you're super strong, you probably never wanna go above 20 pounds when doing slams because it becomes too slow in grinding a movement. We don't get enough Slam and sprawl, whole body face melter, either adding the push-up or just doing it from the plank. This one's great for finishers, starters, plugging into a circuit. So again, the key focus is lift with the hips, chest as high as you can, come up, full slam, jump out into a sprawl, back, repeat. I can jump out into a push-up, back, repeat. Either way, you've got some options to melt the face. This is amazing for improving single leg balance and stability and landing mechanics. A single leg slam using a bouncing ball, because again, on a single leg, we can't get low enough to pick up the slam ball unless you have the mobility of a mutant, and even then, we're losing that functional pattern. In most athletic situations, we never go beyond that quarter bend. So what I'm gonna do is, either behind the head or here, my personal option is here. I'm just gonna load up, crunch the abs, tense that right glute, come down, back up. Keep it one rep at a time. If you have to use that trail leg to touch for assistance, you can. Load, load, and keep repeating that pattern. Amazing for 45 to 60 seconds, upwards of one to two minutes per side. I think you'll really enjoy it. And again, it's kind of a blend of power, instability, and again, the more you can get comfortable decelerating from a single leg position like this, the better you can explode up from a single leg position, big athletic transfer. Here's a one leg chest slam, great for getting you to a single leg hinge to isometrically strengthen your lower back, your glutes, your hamstrings, and also work your pulling and pushing muscles simultaneously. So I get here, load that hip, and then I'm gonna go. Another cool option, I'll show you facing here, is kind of going with a side to side, one arm at a time, which creates even more stability demands around the knee ankle hip. So I'm here, oops, fuck, oh, yeah. chest slams, get them titties, all right, milk them, lactation. I like this with the slam ball, let's get serious, because what it actually forces me to do is I push it down, I then have to quickly grab the ball and pull it right back into position. So I get the push-pull dynamics, I get the isometric work on the whole back side of the body, also some thigh action. So I'm here, loaded up. Right here, think about rowing the ball. So I'm locked in, hinged, so I pull it up quick. Pull it up quick. Pull it up quick. Pull it up quick. Chest Final up. one. 
rotational slams, aka sexual chocolate. We get into a split stance position. And what I'm gonna do, I like the bouncing ball for this. Gets a little isodynamic stability work for the lower body, easy on the knees. You're welcome. I'm gonna go like this, come over, sweep, sweep, sweep. Try this for 10 to 20 reps per side or 30 to 60 seconds per side. You can plug it into a circuit, do it as a movement on its own. Again, stability, power, sexuality. I don't know more what you want. That's enough slamming, okay? Now go slam someone else, use the athleticism and put it into the bedroom. Hope you enjoyed this. Subscribe to my channel. Get my shorts, slam friendly, beach, poolside, training, weekend festivities, Playboy Mansion, make it work at sleepsoulseparately.com. You can get a free three-day trial to my, 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 my monthly fat loss programs at thedailybj.com. You wanna do my online coaching program to build muscle and see what happens when a unicorn mates with a gorilla, go to gorillacorngains.com. I love you so much. I can't believe you're still here. Bye.